It's a good morning to you. Welcome to Asaki Online. My name is Zenzel Ndevele, and this is the Breakfast uh, Club. Today in the program, we are bringing you a uh, live discussion with an economist, uh, Tumzan Spanda, where we'll be talking about uh, the measures that were put by government yesterday. I think many of you would uh, remember or still talking about the uh, um, SI or statutory instrument 142 of 2019, which brought a number of uh, changes to our economy, the big one being uh, the removal of the multi-currency and the introduction of the Zim dollar. Um, I mean, we, we have uh, for the last uh, 10 to 15 hours or 24 hours, people have been talking about this um, statutory instrument with all sorts of uh, complaints and compliments. And uh, it's happening at a time when uh, we have Zesa as a problem. So if you hear the sound that is in the background, that's our generator, because uh, we don't have electricity, and uh, most of the times we don't have electricity for 12 to 15 hours a day. That's the economy that we are working in. That's the economy that has brought the Zim dollar. And I'm not sure whether the introduction of the Zim dollar is going to increase the, 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 the load shedding hours of actually making load shedding better. But also to talk about this introduction of the Zim dollar and many other uh, issues uh, which some of us as the laymen and I've invited Mr. Spanda here to come and help us. Morning. 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 I mean, in the, I'm sure uh, in the last 10 hours or so you've been busy uh, talking yes. to people. Yeah. Uh, uh, basically, break, us, uh, break it down to us what happened yesterday. Yeah, um, it's official introduction of the Zimbabwean dollar, though it was really fully introduced in February. But in February, they maintained the multi currency system, and the major development is that the multi currency system has been outlawed. So the only legal tender in exchange for goods and services in Zimbabwe is the Zimbabwean dollar, not the US dollar and in other currencies, which formed the basket of, of currencies. So let's go back to 2009, when uh, <coughs> Chinamasa says we've de-dollarized and uh, we are now using uh, the multi-currency. What caused the Zimbabwean government to drop the Zim dollar? Hyperinflation, low production, loss of confidence and trust, and uh, the economy was just not functioning. It was at this lowest level in terms of economic activity. It was operating at 10% capacity. And uh, generally, the market had rejected the local currency. People were already trading in foreign currency in their own without any law saying that uh, the market should operate in foreign currency. The market rejected the worthless Zimbabwean dollar. So let's go to 2019. Here's those conditions that led to, the, to us abandoning the, 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 the dollar. Have they changed? No, they haven't changed. Actually, it's uh, increased the level of problems. Because, the, I mean, the issues that I mentioned is a currency has value because people trust that what it is worth today, it is going to be it's worth it tomorrow. And uh, that is still not in place. This currency has been losing value. You can actually see that there's been a rapid decline uh, this year in terms of the local currency. Because the RTGS money that was in the banking system, uh, in terms of its quantity, it was no longer convertible into, into foreign currency. So it had lost its worthness as a, a tradable foreign currency it had become a local currency. So we have been having a local currency for some time. In fact, from 2016, we were having the bond note as a local currency. And then as the government activities you know, increased money supply, the RTGS became a de facto local currency. And then officially in February, they announced it uh, as a local currency. And uh, what they have basically now done is to withdraw all the other currencies as official currencies, just to leave our local currency as the official currency. So the issue of trust, the issue of confidence, which is a major, major thing, is still not there as it was not there in 2019. It is not there today. In terms of productive capabilities of the economy, we know that our imports have increased phenomenally. I mean, last year, 7 billion, the trade deficit is very wide. And this year, the trade deficit is going to be even worse because, as you mentioned, we are having to import electricity, 
I mean, because of the drought issues, we are having to import grain again because of drought, weeds, and so on. So the level of imports is unprecedentedly very high. And in a circumstance like that, where you have such a trade deficit, and you introduce a local currency, as we have done, you are just making the other one very weak. Because there is no demand for it. There is no demand for local currency. The demand is on the foreign side, not this one. There is no demand for a local currency, except the fact that uh, maybe there's pressure from civil servants and others to be paid in foreign currency. So they are having a reaction which affects the total economy to meet salary demands. But the actual pillars required in respect of productivity, import cover, trade surplus, scientific correct you know, budget surplus is not there though. The Minister of Finance is talking about having a surplus. We know that it is fictitious because we are still using a cash budget system to determine the budget deficit. We are not using an accrual system, which means that if I want to have a budget surplus, I can delay to pay certain creditors because then they are not factored into calculating the, the budget deficit. So the, all the fundamentals that are necessary to support a local currency are not there. Balance of payment support is not there. Confidence is not there. So we can go in all the issues that are required to sustain a viable currency. They are not in place. So we are exactly where we were in 2008. In fact, we are in a worse position because in 2008, once there was suppressed capacity utilization, it was there. Companies were still operating. Like if we bring, like say in Bulawayo, Dandop was open, though suppressed, Merlin was operating. A lot of companies were still in operation that time. But those companies now, they are closed. So there is no capacity suppression. We actually don't have production capacity. It needs to be rebuilt. Whereas in 2008, it was there. So the economy of 2019 is much weaker than 2008. Yeah, I mean, we <coughs> just a few days ago in yeah. Mozambique, the president and the minister of finance said that we are going to have a new currency in nine months, which was early 2020. I mean, yesterday I was listening to, um, to the movie on ZFL, having met journalists on Sunday and said, we will only bring the Zim dollar when the fundamentals of the economy are in place. And the same day we publish a statutory instrument that introduces the Zim dollar. What does that tell us about the, the, the inner workings of a government? Are, we, are these guys seeing from the same you know, angle or is pressure from someone? But it's the same voice. It's not like... Uh I'm truly making a statement and uh, another minister making a different statement. It's the same person making that statement. So you have two actors basically who are making pronouncements, the Minister of Finance and the, His Excellency the President, the two of them. They are the ones who are making pronouncements. Everyone else seems to be quiet and the two seem to be contradicting themselves. So we can't say there's a conflict. If there's a conflict, it is within that particular individual. If there's pressure, then it's, it's strange because one person cannot say A, B, C is equal to D, and the same person changes that formula. If it was the contradictions coming from different quarters, we would say there's a problem, but it's the same people. So that, that, that is where the issue of confidence and trust comes in. We are talking about confidence, and there, yeah. there have been a tripartite negotiating forum which uh, <coughs> we just met. And one of the resolutions was that whatever happens, we need to consult each other. Business, churches, you know, labor, government. So was there a consultation process that happened before the introduction of this currency? It doesn't look like. If it is there, then it has not been made public. But... Uh, it's not there. I think when you look at most key economic players, they were looking for a different resolution. And the fact that they were being misled to say it was going to happen in an, in nine months' time, it shows that there is some ambush. There is some ambush. There is some. There is there is lack of property somewhere, and, and lack of respect 
the, the government is imposing itself on other actors. And um, it will have repercussions, yeah. In the last week also we have seen a lot of uh, unions and uh, organizations, civil servants, uh, writing letters saying that uh, if our salaries are not paid in US dollar, we'll be incapacitated and all these kind of things. Now the US dollar is no longer a legal tender. Does that solve the problem? It doesn't solve the problem. Because what one would have expected, you know when you look at, there's something called work level theory. Work level theory talks about levels of work executive, lower levels, and so on, up to just routine work. It means at higher levels, you expect that what fits into higher level practice or management, there should be a lot of thinking, innovation, well research the information that fits into that thinking. But just the, the way we are implementing policy, coming up with policy, it looks like very low level. It does not reflect innovation, it does not reflect any thinking. So anything that is not innovatively done cannot be a sustainable solution. And I think whilst the civil servants were crying about uh, salary increases and so on, they are also uh, acting like illiterate people. Because they get a salary increase, that salary increase we know leads to price increase and it goes on and on and the economy goes into, in, in, into tailspin. And, it's not a solution. The solution is to say, as stakeholders, what are the fundamental problems? What are the pillars required? What is the foundation? The foundation is not there. Everything that is being done is reflecting that we are not having a foundation and we are not building on a foundation. So it's like we have shifted the top of the house because the foundation is always invisible. So we are going to build somewhere and we have left the foundation. So over here since 1980, as a country we've been moving away from the foundation and just moving the top that is visible. So we're attending to the superficial part of the economy and not the fundamental parts. And those are the structural reforms, political and economic, which over time have been resisted. What does this mean to the ordinary person? Does it mean that the prices will not go up? Does it mean that uh, now, you know, prices are going to go down? What's the implication of this decision to, to, to suspend or to remove multi-currency and bring the, the, the US dollar, I mean the, the Zimbabwean dollar as the only tender in Zimbabwe? You know, I, I, I like the Bible in that it has universal principles. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun. So there's nothing new that Zimbabwe is doing. It has been done elsewhere in South America when countries went through hyperinflation and they dollarized. When the government did not manage the dollarization properly, they decreed the dollarization. Like in Bolivia, they decreed, decreed the, you know, the, the dollarization, and it didn't work. The markets will still come out and decide what's best for the country. The fact that the markets were not properly consulted, just as it happened in 2008, the markets saw that uh, the Zim dollar was not a worthwhile currency to trade in. Even today, the markets are going to decide on what is best because uh, this economy must still survive those who have the privilege to govern over us. The market will decide what to do. And human behavior is the same everywhere. What they did in Bolivia and other countries when government decreed de dollarization, the behavior of men beings here is going to follow that same pattern. The local currency eventually will be rejected to lose value because there's no trust, there's no confidence, pillars have not been rebuilt, and uh, the market will prevail once again. And what is best for the country will come from the behavior of the market, not necessarily from the laws that they are putting in place. <coughs> I mean, the last few months we have seen government or banks encouraging people that now you can open your nostril accounts, you get your money. People now have nostril accounts, some of them and companies have nostro accounts, and we now have the Zim dollar as the legal tent. Is someone still allowed to go and get their US dollar in from their nostro account and use it as normal? I think the, the only difference that they have put in there is the foreign account, the foreign money that is held in banks is your private property. It will still be there, but you cannot sp spend it within the economy. If you have to spend it, you must first convert it into a local currency or else you must spend it outside of the economy, but not within the economy as 
<laughs> so, so what you are saying, yeah. if I can get you clear, you are saying today, I cannot go into my bank and say, can I have my $300? You can yeah. draw your money. Yeah. But if As you want in to... US dollars. Yes. You can yeah. withdraw your money. It's yours. It's yeah. your private property. But if you have to spend it, no one in the country is legally allowed to use it. You know, you can't use it at pick and pay and all these other places. You, be you must first convert it and then spend the Zimbabwean dollar. Yeah, there's something here. I mean, we, since 2016, I think somewhere there, we've had the, intro, after the introduction of Bond North, we've had the shortage of cash. Cash has been a problem. And we are introducing the Zimbabwean dollar, asking people to use the Zimbabwean dollar, which they are not going to be able to get in the banks. So we are saying now the RTGS is the means of pay. Yeah, I think the issue of um, physical cash, maybe we're going to see what's going to happen, seeing that uh, these men tend to take us by surprise, and uh, you know, there's no transparency in the way they formulate policy. What one would expect is, if you have a local currency, then there's no reason for not having sufficient fiscal notes. But maybe they will be careful not to print a lot, because they're afraid that uh, that man will then exchange it in the in the market. They might still want to keep the market staffed of physical money and try and get people to use the RTJ system. But you know what's interesting is that in 2005, we were exactly where we are today. We with lots of RTJs which had accumulated in the banking sector and we didn't have sufficient fiscal cash, and people were using the RTJ system to trade in the prime market. And then the government freezed the use of the RTJ system. If you recall, in 2005, they froze the use of the RTJ system because they were t trying to stop its use you know, in the prime market. But it, it didn't solve the problem of the economy. So whatever we're doing even today is still superficial. And uh, we'll wait and see whether they are going to bring in proper money. Because when you look at the bond note, which is the physical form of uh, the RTJs, it's very poor quality money. Maybe they will then bring proper money that has the right features and securities and, and so on. And uh, that obviously has its own implications. Yeah, the reason why I'm asking this is we, we now have the bond, not just the legal tent, the only. So that means if I'm a tourist coming to Zimbabwe, I would have to get down my plane or somewhere, go to a hotel, use a Peruti change or something to get the, US, the, the, the local currency. It has to be physical. Because I don't, if, if it's electronic, I don't have a mobile number here and, and, and all those kind of things. And if I'm an, an individual going to uh, a Peruti charge, does it mean that I'm also getting my money on, on, on the phone? So these are the things that still we, we are not clear of what is going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's um, difficult. I think when you listen, when the president was in Mozambique, he actually said we must be like other nations. We must have our own currency. You know, if you're in South Africa, use the rand. If you're in Botswana, use the pula. And the Minister of Finance also, you know, reiterated the same statement, saying that, um, you know, if you are in the UK, you use the pound at your supermarket, and so on and so on. So for a tourist coming here, it means they must be able to exchange whatever money they have and be given a local currency. So that, that is where the demand now for physical paper money is going to come. Because if you, if you are saying a bond note is $5 and $2, if I want to go hunting and I have $10,000, whilst I may pay the, the operator, the safari company, not 10,000 on their FCA account, but they're spending money within the economy, you know, buying curios or buying, you know, certain things within the economy, they will need to have money. That, that would require that there should be money that has dignity. So maybe they are, they are going to be forced to print money. <laughs> yeah, but but we, also still, we still have to see, because like I'm saying, they are not as transparent as one would expect them to. But also that has to do with the exchange rate. Because if I'm then using my visa card to book into a, a, a hotel and I'm told, it's, it's um, uh, uh, well, uh, $700 uh, dollars and uh, equivalent of 130 years old. Then Zimbabwe becomes 
one of the most expensive destinations? No, I think for, for tourism, because tourism is really in the export sector, they, they will still receive from foreigners, you know, foreign currency. I think the, 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 the issue for hotels is, say, for me, being Zimbabwean, and I have US dollars, if I go to, a, to book it a hotel, I have to convert the US dollars into local currency. So it's mainly in terms of that sector, it would be applying to us locals, not so much to foreigners. Foreigners who still use their visa card, as they, they are using them currently. But for locals, I cannot pay in US dollars. But that makes Zimbabwe yeah. expensive because we'll be using an artificial exchange rate of one to five. Oh, you mean in the case of... Um, oh, if, if you have a, a foreign card. Uh, I'm, I'm going to a hotel and wait, while I can get in the black market, uh, my 100 US will give me 1,000, it will give me 500 in the... In the, in the yeah. what, what we are not sure of, which, which has not come out very clear, we, we saw that the um, pronounced by the Minister of Finance was followed by some announcements by RPZ. Maybe it's an attempt to bring down the power market rate, you know, in respect of selling shares, interest rates, increase and, uh, you know, the 1.2 billion which must be, you know, taken to RPZ to meet, um, you know, legacy debts and there is some effort to try and reduce the amount of money that is available for dealing in the, in the power market. It's just to say to what extent are they able to, to close the gap. We don't think they'll be able to close that gap. If anything, the market is going to be very short of foreign currency and uh, it will widen the gap. And if they try to follow it, inflation will just uh, gallop. So it's a, it's a very difficult uh, situation because what they have not done is to come up with a mechanism that will make prices prevailing in the formal market to be equated with the formal exchange rate. That's why I was saying uh, there's less thinking in terms of application of these policies. Because what you would expect is uh, uh, inflation drives costs. Even if you, you, you are saying uh, there are costs of uh, no value support, but in terms of uh, costs themselves, that's why people are complaining about low salaries. It means goods have become too costly. There's no thought or mechanism which says that uh, because we have introduced these, pri these uh, policies, we are expecting that uh, prices will be compressed so that all prices are denominated at an official sustainable rate. Prices are still working based on the higher rate. So it's how to reduce them. We, one says the, 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 the level of input into policy making is not as astute as it should be. Because one would expect that really there should be a mechanism for the country to operate within a formal framework in terms of exchange rate. Yeah, the, the thing that I find difficult to comprehend is uh, we, we are mostly an informal economy. And most yeah. of our people are working in uh, selling in flea markets. I passed by a flea market in town and uh, I, had, oh, I had two ladies arguing about the price. How, well, how do we sell today? Do we actually take a run when someone has a run? Or there will be police are walking around making sure that we don't sell a run. And I said to myself, this person sells in Bonjanot and they're supposed to order in South Africa. Can they go to the bank and get the run from the bank? Or still they will have to go to the black market and get the money? which means that they have then have to increase their price in anticipation that they are going to buy the foreign currency in the black market. I, I think that is the, one of the most unfortunate thing about uh, the way policy is being formulated. Policy is being formulated on, a, on an assumption of a normal economy. A normal economy would have the majority of its transactions or in its business taking place in the formal economy. But we know that Zimbabwe is currently the second most informalized economy, you know, it is second to Bolivia. When you look at the ratio of activities of the economy, most of them are informal. So we are making policies for a formal economy when 60% of the economy is informal. And the, the RIPZ, in terms of its market, it's giving priority to certain products, cooking oil, wheat, and so on and so on. It's not prioritizing, it's not giving attention to the fact that 
you have 60% of the economy operating outside the normal banking system. So that part of the economy, 60%, will continue trading informally. It will continue dealing in the power market. And um, if you arrest, for how long can you have arrest? Can you have monitors throughout the whole country to make sure that these 94% uh, of economically active people who are in the informal economy get arrested? Will you have prisons which are going to take all these people into jail and so on? And that market will continue receiving US dollars in rents. They will continue trading. And because their prices are lower than in the formal economy, that's where business is going to shift to. So the, the rand, the US dollar, is going to go underground. It will continue being traded in, but outside the formal economy. And uh, we should not expect uh, that uh, you live um, an administrative system of policing and arresting and making sure that there's deterrence for those who are trading in the informal economy. It will continue. So the informal traders who are the bigger part of the economy, 60% of economic activities, and where the majority of citizens are, they, they will continue running with the US dollar and rent. Even if they're not getting it from the bank, they have not been getting it from the bank. They know where they've been getting it and they'll continue getting it there. What's your advice to a business person in, in Zimbabwe today? <laughs> Keep stock <laughs> and real money. <laughs> That's the only solution, keep stock here. Yeah. I think, you know, for a prudent businessman, you know, the economy has not been structured to form capital and retain it. You know, from a business point of view, you form capital when you make profit. So if I make a profit of 100 RTGs today, and that profit is worthless in two weeks' time, I'm not forming capital. It means that the demand for working capital will be continuously increasing. And because interest rates have gone up, it means the, the working capital holding is going to be diminishing. I think businesses would rather trade uh, slowly, where they retain stock, and they trade with sufficient stock to pay their expenses. So the, the general activity in the economy is going to go down. I think that's what most business people do, is to slow down on trading and retain stock as much as one can keep and hold on to it. Does this improve the life of civil servants who are saying, and I want to be paid in US dollars? No, I don't see how. I don't see how it does, it will not. Because the government cannot close that gap. I mean, when you look at just the food requirements for an average home, just food, maybe you need $800 a month, just for food, how will government increase those salaries to make sure that, you know, civil servants can be accommodated to buy food, pay their school fees, medicines, travel to work, and all the essentials. How, how do you increase the salaries to make sure that the various constituents, you know, what you require just for a normal life, you are able to meet. It's not possible to increase those salaries. That's why I was saying, uh, to me, there was a need to say, okay, we're introducing a, a new currency, have a new cost base. It was not done in 2009. If you look at the structural distortions on costs in 2009, which are still there today, you would find a bank clerk was earning more, be higher than a director in government, educated and so on. So the distortions are still there. Certain sectors in, 20, in 2009, the local authorities, for example, you had the town clerks, some of them earning up to $35,000. When in the private sector, it's that you may have been earning 1,500 and so on. So structural distortions in the total cost of the country they're still there. There has been no effort at all to address the issues of structural distortions in the whole cost structure of the economy. I know Minister of Finance was saying that using a US dollar makes us less competitive and so on and so on. But it's all because of distortions in the cost structure. The cost structures in Zimbabwe are, I, I think they are for an illiterate country, not for a country that is an education. The cost structures are terrible. So lastly, where do you see our economy, you know, 
Let me say six months from now. Oh, dollar rise. Go go back. The market will find its logical position. That invisible hand of how markets operate is going to drive the market to a place where it will normalize itself. And government will follow the market. Once today they made a decree, but sooner or later they will realize that propaganda and commands can do so much, but they cannot always tell market forces. Well, there you have it. Uh, that was uh, <coughs> Mr. Spanda. They're discussing with us uh, the implications of uh, uh, the uh, SI 142 of 2019. A comrade on Twitter today said him totally moved uh, bonds from one grave to the other. You know, and if I begin to am am a am a am a but it looks like I'm a bonds are Definitely, they, they, they want a, a wake up. We have dry bonds and we remain with dry bonds. And as Wanda says, in six months' time, we'll have uh, dollarized. Because what will happen is that someone will just say, my product is $10 and I'm selling it at $10 with whatever equivalent it is in bond note. So just for example, today when I called for stock feed, I was told that it is $130 up from 76 80 dollars so they've just adjusted the rate that was prevailing now is almost one is to 13 because these guys have it in mind that they want to restock so i'm not sure whether we are out of this problem or we are digging deeper but that's the scenario that we have in and we're hoping to be checking in maybe in a month's time to find out how the economy is doing in the new currency my name is Zenzel and till we meet again tomorrow have a good day